So John, for those who want to find out more about your incredible journey, your work, where do they go to for more information? Well, I've, 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 uh, I've written two books. I'm an art director, actually, and for me, I spent my life taking words out. Um, quite why I'm now writing books. You know, I always remember when I, Thames and Hudson asked me to write my first book, and I said, but oh, I don't know, I'm an art director. You know, I, I take words out and I'll put them in. And uh, eventually they convinced me of doing it. And uh, I said, so I said, so how many words do you think I've got to write? And they said, oh, about 60,000. I mean, 60,000, you must be joking. I mean, you know, I usually do about 12 and that's it. You know, a poster, no more than five, you know. Um, so I wrote a book called Hegarty on Advertising, talking about my career, how I started, how I got going, and all the, the things that, that have um, affected me. And within that, there are stories about how you create a campaign, how you're a creative director, how you live in a creative world. The other little book I've done is just Hegarty on Creativity. And it's a book about how you live a creative life. And from that, I've developed, and, and during COVID, I was constantly being asked, so those two books are out there, Hegarty on Advertising, Hegarty on Creativity. Uh, one says there are no rules, the other one says turning intelligence into magic, which is what advertising does, turns intelligence into magic. Um, but whilst we were, during COVID, I was constantly being asked to, to, to give online talks to large organisations, large, huge companies would say, John, you know, whilst we're doing, would you talk about creativity to our marketing people, our brand people, or however it is, which I did. And I, <clears throat> I always walked away loving doing it, but saying, I'm really not doing this properly in the sense of it's too big a subject in, to cover off in 40 minutes and then with 20 minutes of questioning. So I came out of COVID and, and I said to my partners here at the guys, look, I really do think we should do something about this. Uh, and we developed eight talks. It's called the business of creativity because we want businesses to understand that to succeed, they should be engaging with creativity constantly. It's not something, oh, I occasionally do and people are afraid of it. And, you know, I spent my career with people going to be, oh, John, you're creative, so you decide. I say, no, 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 no. We are all creative. That's what separates us from the animal kingdom. We're creative. We take, tell stories. That's creative, you know. It's just some of us are now living by it. That's the difference, all right? So it's a course that, that, and I wanted it for business because business, you know, here we are with all the technology and algorithms and data, and it's no longer just data, it's now big data. Oh, blimey, it's big data. But get them to understand what do you do with all this stuff? And because everybody's going to have the same stuff. They're all going to have the same data. They're all going to have the same algorithms. They can work through it. What's going to be the difference is how you imagine your service, your product, your business to be different in some shape or form. That's about creativity. So we've called it the business of creativity. And it takes people through a kind of, uh, the, it's eight lectures, it's online. And at the end of each one, I interview somebody from uh, the business world who's been hugely su successful. So like Greg Hoffman, who is the ex-CMO of Nike, talking about how they use creativity. Paul Smith talking about, obviously, in, in, in kind of um, fashion world, how you, you constantly engage with it. Thomas Heatherwick, uh, brilliant, brilliant, you know, designer, architect, talking about he runs a, a, a creative company and how they judge creative work and how they use it. So lots of fascinating people talking about it. So it's eight, eight lectures. And just as, sorry, just to finish with this, just as I, we were developing this, McKinsey come out with this report, you know, consultancy company, very dry, very analytical, saying we've looked at this and those companies that engage with creativity create better returns for their shareholders. So I had a belief on my part about creativity and about imagination and how you vi vision the future. And then McKinsey saying, you guys, you know, businesses, you've got to engage with creativity. So it was a perfect moment and we've released it and it's, it's wonderful and it's, we're getting great reports on it. And my passion really is for people to engage with creativity because it's not just about business. It's not just about, you know, how you run something better or how you do something. It's about how you get more out of life. So in a way, it's, it's kind of like a therapy. <laughs>
<laughs> as well as a kind of tool. You know, just the way some people kind of engage with yoga or something, which is wonderful. But actually, if you understand creativity and you understand your creativity, you get so much more out of everything in life. And that's what's lovely about it. Amazing, John. Well, listen, thank you for today. You've been a great friend and supporter Pleasure. to me in Peace One Day. Thanks, John. And congratulations to you and everything you do. And I do want people to engage with Peace One Day and show how they can help move this forward. Uh, and it saves lives. What a brilliant thing to do. Most precious thing in the world. Thanks. And well done you, Jeremy. Thank you very much.